Hi everyone, today we've got a packed lineup. OpenAI's O3 model, the latest news in the DeepSeek drama, awesome AI use cases from Google and Salesforce, and a shocking discovery about AI reliability you don't want to miss. Let's dive in. AI models are advancing insanely fast. Just last week, we talked about Google and Anthropic. But it looks like we have a new king. OpenAI recently revealed its latest small reasoning models, the O3 mini model series. And its performance? Ridiculous. This is a mini model, but you wouldn't think so by looking at the benchmarks. Just check this out. In PhD level science, O3 mini high surpasses previous models in answering graduate level science questions. And Frontier Math, this is an extremely difficult benchmark for LLMs, but O3 Mini High shows insane improvements. This is mind-blowing, but it doesn't stop there. It is also great at coding. If you thought O1 was a monster, O3 Mini High destroys it in coding task. So let's see it in action. First, I choose the O3 Mini High because I want it to code something for me, and I have already prepared a prompt. I am asking it to create the Tetris game, which is actually more complex than something like the snake game. And now it thinks, and look, just after 22 seconds, we have an answer and it looks just fine. So this all seems right. It also explained how to build it. And now I copy and paste the code and run it through the terminal. And this is amazing. <laughs> it is unbelievable. It was the first attempt and it got it exactly right. But the best part, these models are also available to free users and the API is way cheaper than the old one. Just look at the difference. Either they have found a way to make models more efficient or the competition from China has finally reached our shores. And one more thing, there is also a new king in the open source community and it is not deep seek. The Olam Institute for AI has released Tulu 3, a 400 and plus billion parameter model that outperforms both DeepSeek and GPT-40 on key benchmarks. And it is on the Apache 2.0 license. Nice. I cannot wait to see what you're going to do with it. Just a few days ago, the DeepSeek app became the most downloaded AI app in the US App Store, overtaking ChatGPT. But it didn't take long for the drama to continue. OpenAI claims DeepSeek was able to develop its model so cheaply because they didn't build it from scratch. Instead, they accused DeepSeek of using a technique called distillation. This means DeepSeek's model was presumably trained by studying how OpenAI's O1 model responds to different inputs. It doesn't steal the original model's internal code, but it learns how to mimic its behavior by analyzing its outputs. OpenAI says it has evidence that companies linked to DeepSeek extracted massive amounts of data from OpenAI's API, suggesting that they reverse engineer the technology. But this is just one of the many claims, and there is also some information suggesting that the DeepSeek R1 hype was orchestrated by the Chinese government. And now it has been banned by different countries and agencies because of its ties to the Chinese government. But not everything about this has been negative. Microsoft just made Copilot's Think Deeper mode free for all users. Now let's take a look at two awesome use cases in the tech industry. We all know Google is one of the biggest players in the AI right now. But if you were wondering how exactly are they using this technology to improve themselves? Well, you might guess right to write code. Google has been using AI to make software development faster by slashing code migration time in half. Instead of engineers manually updating and migrating code across thousands of files, AI stepped in to analyze and rewrite massive amounts of code. And the results are wild. In just three months, they updated almost 150,000 lines of code, migrated over 5,000 files, and 87% of AI-generated code was accepted as is. This is an insane increase in efficiency. Now I can go to the corner and cry because my backlog was delayed again. But Google isn't the only one using AI to boost efficiency. Salesforce is tackling something way less obvious, but just as tedious, enterprise architecture. If you have never heard of it, think of it as the blueprint for how massive companies organize their IT systems. This stuff requires analyzing endless documents, compliance rules, and system dependencies, a slow, painful process. So Salesforce built this EA agent, an AI power assistant that helps architects navigate 
this complexity. It scans, organizes, and normalizes massive amounts of documentation. It flags compliance gaps before they become a problem. And it helps architects align systems with company-wide standards. Now imagine a world where IT architects actually give you feedback in a few days instead of feeling lucky because you got a response in a few weeks. AI models are getting better every day. Or are they? Turns out they might be just confidently wrong, and you probably wouldn't even notice. Two recent studies reveal a major flaw. Your LLM does not just hallucinate, it is trained to do so, and we should be careful. Let us start with a recent study in Nature showing that if just 0.001% of an AI's training data is poison, it can start giving false medical advice. And even experts can tell the difference. Here's how it works. Medical knowledge in datasets like the pile comes from a mix of sources, some reliable like PubMed and some vulnerable to manipulation like the common crop. This creates a risk for what it's called a data poisoning attack. In their experiment, researchers injected fake medical facts like false claims about vaccines into a dataset. These poison models were then tested against clean models, and the results were disturbing. Even with this tiny amount of poison data, the models became more likely to generate harmful medical advice. And here is the kicker. They still scored just as high as clean models on standard benchmarks. That means they can pass tests while quietly spreading dangerous misinformation. Another study showed something similar, not for medicine, but for history. It tested ChatGPT, Lama, and Gemini on advanced historical questions. They were divided by regions, testing models on questions like the presence of scale armor in ancient Egypt. Even GPT-4 Turbo, the best performer, only achieved 46% accuracy, pretty much the same as flipping a coin. And it struggled the most with underrepresented regions like Sub-Saharan Africa, showing potential biases in the training data. It seems that AI models tend to assume things based on what's most common online, so they often just make stuff up. Or in the words of the Nature Research paper, it quietly spreads misinformation while being confident about it. And now you know why caution is key. Large language models, while impressive, are incredibly vulnerable to poisoning attacks and biased data. With the massive data sets they rely on, it's nearly impossible to guarantee that none of the data was tampered with. Just think about it. Anyone could create fake, convincing data, upload it online, and wait for it to be crawled into a training set. Well, that's it for today. As always, you can find the link to all the news in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. Hope to see you in the next one.